These orcs were painted in just a couple of afternoons using 50 cent brushes and a handful of colors. And we're gonna show you how to do it too. Even if you have no experience, how to paint over 70 miniatures the fast and easy way, today on Dungeon Graph. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel will help you run the ultimate game of Dungeons and Dragons. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon, and you'll be on your way to adventure. A few months back, I had a video on how to get a lot of miniatures for cheap, and it was really popular. The most popular we've ever had on this channel with over 150,000 views. In that video, I recommended this game, Massive Darkness by Cool Mini or Not. It comes with 75 miniatures, and we got it for only 40 or 45 dollars. That brings it in at 50 cents a miniature. But there are a lot of great board games that have just as many, like the D&D board games and the Conan game. But now you have a new problem. You have a ton of miniatures to paint. You don't have the skill, you don't have the paint, you don't have the brushes, you don't have the time. Don't worry, we've got you covered. Today I'm gonna to show you how Adhesive Tom and I painted all 70 miniatures that you see here in record time, just a couple of afternoons. And we did it using 50 cent Hobby Lobby brushes and only about five different colors. And they're pretty much invulnerable. You can just grab them like this, take them off your table, throw them in a box. And for the amount of time you're putting in, the results are gonna be insane. Let's take a closer look. Close up, they look good. They're not Sam Lentz, James Wobble competition level good, but they're good enough for the table and it will impress your friends. Notice we didn't paint the eyes because screw eyes, you can't see them from where you're sitting at the table anyway. That's something you do on an individual character figure, not for the monsters that you're gonna mass slaughter. Today we're gonna show you how to do it and we'll show you two methods so you can paint your orcs either traditional green or massive darkness blue. The game also comes with a small army of dwarves. You may not have these exact miniatures, but the color scheme and speed painting techniques we're going to show you can be used on any models. And you don't need an airbrush, a fancy sable hairbrush, magnifying glasses, anything like that. This is the perfect project for novices. It's no experience, no problem. Let's get to it. We prime these models using Mornfang Brown by Citadel. I love the coverage of Citadel primers. It gives a nice, uniform, smooth coat. It's expensive, so you could just use Krylon if you want. Brown might seem like a weird choice, but you'll see why we chose it in a second. Now for the base colors, we use Vallejo Pale Blue, Scale Color Heavy Metal, Citadel's Carrick Stone, Ushampi Bone, and Steel Legion Draft. And in the middle, the secret weapon, Army Painter's Strong Tone Quick Shade. So we've got the axe guys, and these are the sword guys, and you know, these are the dual sword wielders, and those are the other swords, and we have, these are archers, and we're going to line them all up, and we're going to do this assembly line style. We start by painting the flesh with Vallejo Pale Blue. It is critical that you thin your paint. You want it to be the consistency of skim milk. If it's a little translucent, that's okay. You can do another coat. Now here we're using a number eight Hobby Lobby brush. It costs just 50 cents. It comes in a nice big package. Thanks to James Wapple for this tip. He does 90% of his work with this cheap brush. We paint the bow, clothes, and skull on the helmet with shop de bone. I forgot to mention the feathers on the arrows. We use a bright red for those. Any bright red will do. Sorry for that oversight. And here's why we primed them brown. The helmet, shoulder armor and belt. They're already done. It's way easier to paint the clothing around the belt than reach in and try to get the belt with a tiny brush. This trick will save us a ton of time. And now an appearance by Buddy the Cat. Wow, Buddy. You're famous, Buddy. <laughs> We're going into the room. With Buddy gone, we paint the stand Carrick Stone. When washed, this color will blend right in with my ultimate dungeon terrain. For the green orcs, we use Citadel washes, Beltan green, and Athonian camishade. And this time, we're going to eliminate Ushapti bone and paint the cloth and the stand Carrick Stone, as it will save us time. How fast can we paint an orc go? This orc was primed gray and dusted with white, so there are a few shadows. Gray is a much better choice for the green skin. Carrick Stone covers nicely, and I did just one coat. It might seem weird to paint the belt pouches the same color, but you'll see it'll turn out good in the end. You can still see it's wet as I shade the model with Athonian Kama Shade. And we paint right over those armbands. We'll get to them later. Yeah. 
I let the wash dry and I paint another five or 10 models, then go back with Beltan Green. This gives the skin a richer green color and it really preserves the detail of those muscles. If you put on too much, you just soak it up with the end of your brush and wipe off the excess on a paper towel. We hit the armbands with Carrick Stone and paint the swords with heavy metal. I hit the piercings with heavy metal, but this was kind of a waste of time because we're just gonna have to touch them up again after the quick shade anyway. And we clock in at four minutes, 34 seconds, which means the pair of us could paint 20 models every 45 minutes. For the ogre and troll, we use Citadel's Cadian Flesh Tone for the skin and Reaper's Green Ochre for the leather straps and belt pouches. These models were also prime brown, so we just painted around the hairy parts and touched them up using Reaper's Basic Dirt. Because this is a larger model, I thought I'd add some detail to the stand because it's gonna really stand out by painting the mortar lines so it looks like a dungeon floor. I did that with dark gray. And I painted these mortar lines with a 25 cent number one brush we got from China. I also painted every other flagstone, Citadel's Screaming Skull, the same color I used for the skulls that hang on the belt. I don't get to show it here, but that's what I did. It just adds a little variety to the stones and when it's washed with the quick shade, it'll look more of a uniform color. I dry brushed the ogre's fur Carrick Stone so that we stay with the same color palette. And for the cloak, I used a single coat of Reaper's Crimson Red. If you're gonna paint anything red, always start with brown and you're gonna gradually build up the color, but we're gonna stop here. The dwarves were really simple. Cadian flesh tone skin, Carrick Stone clothing, heavy metal armor, Reaper basic dirt for touch-ups when we colored outside the lines. I highly recommend Scale Colors Heavy Metal. It has the best coverage of any metallic paint we've ever worked with. It's never separated and does the job in one coat. And that was the key to our speed. We let the models dry overnight before moving to the next step, Army Painter's Strong Tone Quick Shade. I stir the quick shade using a tongue depressor, getting the pigment up from the bottom. Whatever you do, do not shake the can. This will cause the quick shade to harden. Some people just use stain from the hardware store for this step, which is much cheaper, but I'm not brave enough for that. I know the quick shade will deliver a consistent result and I'm willing to pay $25 for consistency. One can of quick shade will paint several hundred models, so to me, it's worth it. You can see, I just slap it on here with the same number eight brush we used to paint the models. Look at that level of detail. It pops out like magic. Because Quickshade is oil-based, I use gloves. You also need to clean the brush with mineral spirits, but I'd rather just throw the 50 cent brush away because I'm lazy and I don't need to keep flammable chemicals in the workshop where Buddy the Cat can knock them over. Quickshade also provides a protective coating which makes the miniature all but impervious to chipping. However, it takes a full 48 hours to cure. Sop up any excess quick shade with the tip of your brush and wipe it off on a paper towel. It'll gather in the folds of the clothing and at the feet of the model. And you wanna do this quickly after painting the model. After five minutes, it'll be too sticky. Then give the model a rest for a full 48 hours, but it's all downhill from here. We start the highlighting process with the number one brush on the piercings. You don't need to cover the piercing, just touch the ring to give it the appearance of a shine. I use my number eight brush to do the edge of the sword, the ax blades, helmets, and all the raised parts of the metal like the shoulders. For the orc skin, I return to the number one brush and that Vallejo light blue. I hit the top of the ears, the brows, the cheeks, the back of the head, and all the raised muscles like the traps, triceps, the pectoral muscles, and abdominal muscles. The dwarf skin is the easiest. Just hit the nose with Cadian Flesh Tone and that's it. For the younger dwarves, I hit the nose and the top of the shoulders and biceps so their muscles stand out. Here are the finished dwarves. Notice they aren't shiny. That's because we didn't show you the next two steps. We used Krylon Gloss Spray Varnish. Gave it a good coat, let that dry for 48 hours and that makes them super impervious to chipping or spills. Then we hit it with Tester's Dull Coat Matte Sealer. This will take the shine down and give it a matte finish. Here's our ogre. We painted the tattoo on the arm by mixing a medium blue with Reaper Tan Shadow. We highlighted those muscles so they pop. 
There's our troll, he looks awesome. I just did a little highlighting with the Cadian flesh tone and I think I hit that one tooth, but very little work was done after the quick shade. Here's the stand, it looks pretty good. It matches mostly with the UDT. It would look better if I touched it up a bit, but I'm way too lazy for that. Which orc looks better? Let me know in the comments section below if you prefer green or massive darkness blue. The entire job took three sessions of several hours each, but we had a lot of fun painting with each other. If you've never painted before, definitely paint with a buddy because you'll notice each other's mistakes and it helps to pass the time. And don't be intimidated. Remember, this isn't a Renaissance masterpiece. You're putting orcs on a table. Believe me, your friends will be impressed. Follow this video and you'll get similar results. Post them on our Facebook group and show us how they turned out. So yeah, quick and easy. Now, if you want more awesome videos about miniatures, terrain, and D&D in general, check out these videos over here. Subscribe and click that bell icon and share this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Professor Dungeon Master. I'll see you at the table. May all your rolls be 20s.